marijuana stocks in 2015. This is Industry Focus. Hi Fools, healthcare analyst Michael Douglas here today and the topic of the day is going to be marijuana stocks. I've got Todd Campbell uh, on, uh, on Hangouts with us from New Hampshire. Todd, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. I remember to wear my green shirt today. Oh, yeah. that's important. We, we, we actually didn't match this time, which is a shame. We do about half the time, but uh, I guess we just, you know, my people will call your people. We'll make sure that happens more in the future, all right? <laughs> all right, sounds good. All right, so, so we're, you know, one of the things that biotech investors, healthcare investors, eh, heck, general retail investors really interested in is marijuana stocks and particularly because we've got some marijuana stocks with um, you know some incoming catalysts uh, in 2015 and 2016 we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about that uh, about them and sort of looking at their opportunities and kind of what we think about them as stocks so let's start with the granddaddy in the field, right? Which is, I, I think we have to say GW Pharma, right? They are the name that is always on the tip of somebody's tongue when we're talking about cannabidiol or marijuana stocks. Todd, what's your take? Yeah, you know, marijuana stocks caught a lot of attention last year. I think it was part of that was because of the election cycle. Mm -hmm. And there were some pretty key elections that were going on uh, that were addressing both expanding medical marijuana um, and also there were some recreational marijuana uh, legislation that was being voted on last fall as well. Um, overall, in the marijuana space, as you mentioned, GW Pharma is one of only two that I would define as being investable yeah. marijuana stocks. And by investable, I mean that they're widely traded on major exchanges. I mean, anybody who watched The Wolf on Wall Street knows that you should probably avoid pink sheet stocks. Yeah. Uh, that's where a lot of these marijuana stocks outside of GW Pharma and Insys Therapeutics uh, tend to trade. Um, you know, so we tend to focus here on, you know, more widely traded stocks that are, I guess they, they have, they're more proven um, than some of these others. And, you know, last year you had GW Pharma and Insys, both of them returned about 64% on the year. Uh, really big showing for those drug, those two companies. And that excitement centered mainly around both of their companies' uh, work on developing, basically taking the chemical compounds that are found in marijuana, synthesizing those, and then delivering those to patients to try and help, you know, really uh, indications that really uh, have a, an unmet need. For example, GW Pharma has been studying the, uh, its drug Sativex for use in cancer pain. Um, it's also been studying uh, uh, CBD for use in epilepsy. And in 2015, um, GW Pharma is going to roll out more data that investors will be able to dissect and digest to see whether or not they want to be long the stock heading into the 2016 election year cycle. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of GW Pharma um, for 2015 because I think that the stock run last year uh, may have made it a little bit pricey. Um, yeah, no, I, I think I think that's a that's a fair concern. I mean, particularly when you consider, I mean, traditional valuations a little tough in healthcare because it's like, well, earnings per share those can you know as as shown uh, by a number of stocks, you know, they they can quadruple one year on another. But um, you know, when you look at their price to sales, for example, for the trailing 12 months. 33, according to Yahoo Finance. I mean, that, that is a pretty substantial, um, that's price to perfection. And I, and I think that there are a couple of concerns there, right? For me, one of the big ones is, uh, you know, people, pe you know, there's an election that says, oh, you know, let's, let, you know, we're legalizing marijuana in X state. And immediately the marijuana stocks, so-called marijuana stocks get affected, even though these aren't these are really going through the FDA, and it, it, it's it's a it's a, uh, a biotech cannabidiol. It's not really um, what you traditionally think of as marijuana. A and then B. You know, there's also this recent uh, recent uh, Sativex um, phase three trial in uh, cancer pain, um, in which Sativex, the GW drug, uh, basically failed to beat placebo. Now, of course, this first of only. Th of, of three phase three trials there, but I think it's a little bit of a concern for in, uh, for investors who have just priced this stock so high. 
Yeah, Michael, that's an awesome point because what it does is it, it really points to what it is that an investor is trying to accomplish with, with buying marijuana stocks. I, I think that a lot of people are looking at it and saying, well, look what happened to people who invested in alcohol after prohibition ended. Mm -hmm. or, or look at how big the market is for tobacco products. Could marijuana be that big someday? Um, unfortunately, right now, there's no real companies that you can invest in in the stock market um, that are handling the, the legal cannabis side of things. I mean, GW right. Pharma and Insys, to your point, they're researching synthetic drugs that are based on the chemical components of those of marijuana. Those are going to have to go through FDA trials, prove themselves through those trials, and get approved. And in the case of Sativex, they were unable to beat placebo in the first of the three phase three trials that are going to give us data readouts this year. Mm -hmm. That's not a ringing endorsement. And what it does is it reminds me of what happened 10, 15 years ago with tobacco. Mm -hmm. You know, there were a lot of interest in developing um, treatments for or medicine based on tobacco that ended up going nowhere because when push came to shove, clinical trials couldn't show the efficacy um, could outperform anything else. Right. Well, and, and, and when it comes down to any biotech stock, right, data is key. Um, and so far, you know, in this particular indication, Sativex data hasn't been good. Now, of course, will it, could it have good data in, in this indication and these other phase three trials? Could it have good data in other indications? Of course. But when you have a stock that's priced this richly, I think you have to have perfect execution just about to justify that valuation. Um, and, and I think that that's kind of a, a very legitimate concern for, for foolish, um, relatively risk averse investors to have. Now, let, let's, let's turn the conversation over to Insys. Now, this is a stock you're a little bit more bullish on than GW Pharma. What's your, what's your elevator pitch for it? Insys is an intriguing company. It's more intriguing to me than GW Pharma because it's already it's already generating revenue. It already has a product on the market. It markets a drug called Subsys, and Subsys is a uh, an opiate spray that's used to treat breakthrough cancer pain, and it's been a, a really big success. I mean, the s sales of the drug doubled in the most recently reported quarter, the third quarter, to about 58 million. So you, it's a drug that's already doing about 230, 240 million dollars a year, and you know, Insys has the same market cap as GW Pharma that doesn't have, you know, any revenue aside from, a, you know, Sativex is approved for MS plasticity in Europe and, you know, maybe they, they get five or six million dollars a year in sales from that. So I, I think Insys has proven itself, it has revenue that's giving it financial flexibility. That financial flexibility means that it's debt free, mm -hmm. there's less chance of dilution, and it has plenty of money that it can reinvest into its own marijuana research programs, which are studying uh, CBD also for epilepsy, which you know, many GW Pharma uh, investors would argue that epilepsy is, is the reason to own GW Pharma. Um, I would say that incest has the same opportunity, but it has better financials. Yeah, well, and, and when you and when you look at that revenue differential, and again, just quoting uh, Yahoo Finance, you know, um, GW Pharma's is uh, under fifty million for the trailing twelve months, and Insys is is uh, what right around two hundred million. So you have the same valuation on four x the sales. It's like, well, okay, you know, that may be a more um, a, a, a better opportunity for folks when and, and, and you can see that difference in that uh, price to sales ratio it's only eight for instance which I know is still rich by most uh, valuations but in biotech it's not really that far off the beaten path yeah I mean in, for full disclosure I happen to be long in this, so I want to make sure that that's people are aware of that sure um, you know one of the other things that I think investors need to be watching for in insist is that you know, the the early stage research for epilepsy drugs is intriguing, but they have a much closer catalyst in um, their oral uh, new formulation of the, of the long-standing marijuana drug Marinol, which of course has been used for 20 some odd years to help uh, chemo, reduce chemotherapy nausea, uh, right. uh, induced nausea. Um, you know, they have what they think is a better mousetrap for that marijuana drug. It's a $150 million market that's growing 4% a year. They think they can capture a lot of that market if they can win uh, FDA approval. They've had some hiccups as far as their filing of information with the FDA, 
but supposedly that's going to get filed this quarter, which could clear the way for an approval sometime, um, you know, and have, the mar- have it go on market sometime early in 16. Sure. Well, and I'll say again, you know, when I, again, sort of looking at it from a valuation perspective and from a, a potential growth perspective, um, INSYS is, is, is not me personally, my style of investing. And again, you know, one of the nice things about the Motley Fool, we're Motley, you know, so we, we, we definitely have, um, different viewpoints on, on companies and, and we, we, we believe that, um, an open and, and, and free marketplace of ideas about them is going to make us all better investors. So I think it's really important for us to, for us to have disagreements. I mean, for me, when I look at that market size and, and the potential growth, you know, I, it, it looks too rich for me. Um, and I still worry about that sort of, um, the, the association with marijuana bump, you know, sort of unreasonably, um, getting people sort of unreasonably excited, um, catalysts that have nothing to do with the business, like, you know, uh, marijuana, um, legalization in a certain state, bumping the stock for no reason. That's the sort of thing that always, um, concerns me. And I, it's a worry for me going forward for the business. But I, I will say, you know, if you're, if you're really interested in the space and if it's kind of like, you know, you're putting your money somewhere. I would definitely prefer Insys to GW. I like their opportunities better. Yeah, and I think that you make a great point as far as, you know, investors, generally speaking, have not done well chasing fads or whatever's in the news for the moment. Um, so you, know, you need to approach these things not through rose-colored lenses, but you need to do your homework, your due diligence, and you need to be willing to admit when you're wrong. Yeah. And especially when it comes to investing in biotechnology companies, the, the reality is that 90% of drugs fail in clinical trials. So the odds are kind of stacked against you yeah. in, in that regard. So you need to be willing to say, okay, I'm willing to, to after doing my homework, to take on the risk of being completely wrong. Yeah, and and that is the that is that is kind of part of the deal, and and certainly um, one thing we're all about here at the Motley Fool is is educating people and making sure that they have the 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 data they need to make smart decisions. Um, Todd, uh, thank you for your for your thoughts on marijuana stocks today. I think this has been a really good conversation, and and one that I think is going to be ongoing since we always seem to talk about them a little bit uh, uh, on and off camera. Um, Let's, uh, let's, let's definitely circle back up on this, uh, especially once data is out from uh, our friends at the J.P. Morgan conference this afternoon on Insys. That'll be very interesting. Um, until then, folks, stay tuned to Fool.com and the Industry Focus podcast for all of your investing needs. And Fool on.